Hello everybody and welcome to Innovative Vector Works BIM. My name is Jonathan Reeves and I'm an architect and professional Vectorworks teacher. I'm going to share with you some of my top 10 favourite Vectorworks 2018 features. But first, I'd like to talk a little bit about myself, just to introduce myself and what I do. So my background is architecture, <coughs> my practice is JR Architecture Limited and I've been a practice architect in the UK with my own practice since 2000. Uh, I'm also an author and recently wrote the Innovative Vectorworks BIM book, hence the title of the talk. And it's a really nice book, it's been well received, um, it's been sort of bought or downloaded over a thousand times and there's some really great hints and tips available. So if any of you would like to get a copy of that please do a search on my website and you can download a copy um, and certainly have a look at the hints and tips. It will really help you in your use of Vectorworks. So here we see one of the pages from the hints and tips page. It's nicely illustrated and um, I think you'll find it very valuable. Okay, so I've basically also been working as a professional Vectorworks teacher and trainer for the last 17 years, as well as a Vectorworks BIM consultant. And finally, I'm actually an authorised partner and reseller for Vectorworks UK. So I'm really proud to be part of that, that team. So let's get back to the training itself. Okay, so for me, one of the greatest features of Vectorworks 2018 is the fact that we can work in 3D to view our models. And here I'm showing you one of my projects that I'm currently working on at the moment for a new domestic replacement dwelling. So I'm kind of spilling the model around in real time and you can see it's pretty interactive. And in Vectorworks previously, whenever we were modelling, we would always use the keypad, the numerical keypad, to change view. So for example, if I hit zero, I go to the top plan. If I go to three, I get the right isometric, as you can see here. And if I go to two, that will give me a front view. So I definitely recommend you get yourself a big keyboard and it really is a nice way to change view. Now five, by the way, is the top view, the 3D rendered top view. So zero, unrendered, planometric view and all the other views there as well. So we can pan around with the mouse and of course we can also use the fly around tool and the shortcut for that if you are interested is shift and C to fly around the model. But you know what it's like when we're actually modeling the building it's really nice to be able to see this with what they call multiple views. So one of the loveliest new features of 2018 is the fact that we now have multiple views. So in order to activate this, simply go up to the multiple views button, click enable multiple views, and you can see Vectorworks will take a second to re-render. But basically now, in each of the viewports, I have my model. And what's really nice is I've got a rendered view down here, I've got a plan view over here and in each one I can have different visibilities. So for example, if I go to this view you can use same visibilities and then they'll all be the same. But if I enable individual visibilities then I can use my navigation palette, let's activate this view, to go across and just turn on the other layers. So all of the views have their own render mode. I can easily go up and render that view and use this view to model. Let's do this view, let's turn on the other layers and classes I should add in that view. Now all your usual shortcuts like Command 4 and Command 6 will also work within those views. So if you do have an object selected and you do Command 6 it will fit to the object and if you hold Command 4 it will fit to the page. So that's really nice. So I can really navigate between these. Now what I've done is set up a nice shortcut key on my enhanced workspace and this is something I've developed over the years and when I'm working with people and giving them training I'll always help them out and give them my workspace. So basically if I click the equals key on the uh, keyboard you'll see very quickly I can skip between the various views and the really nice thing is the active view is the one that I kind of skip to immediately. Excellent, I think you get the idea. Now how does this sort of work out when we're actually modelling? Well, let's have a look at this. So let's zoom into this view here. You'll see that if I actually kind of take a chair or 
a sofa in this case, and I kind of move its position. If you watch carefully, it immediately updates in all the other views. So without waiting or doing anything at all, I can, I can work through those different views. And this is really great in that I can make some changes. I can start to slide this door along here and work in this view. Actually, that, sorry, that isn't a door. That's something else. Let's have a look at, yeah, let's kind of scroll over here to where the doors are. So as I scroll through, I can slide the door there and reposition it a bit closer and it immediately updates in the model. Or I could actually slide it in the 3D view and it'll update in the plan. So it's really nice, you can work in multiple views. Now when it comes to actually um, extruding and so on as well, let me have a look at turning the site on for a second. And you'll see that if I kind of want to add a feature into the site here, if for example, um, I was just adding, not sure what it is, but let's say I just add a, a shape here, a rectangle, you immediately see that I can go over to this view and start to push and pull in the 3D view, but also if I really want to, I can go to this side view here. So it makes it very easy to snap in to various aspects of the model. So between all these different views, easily I can model very accurately what I'm looking to do. And I find that a real bonus when I'm modeling. So let's delete that, we didn't really need that. And I think that kind of explains that first feature. Okay, brilliant. So what I would like to do now is share with you my second top 10 feature. And this kind of follows on a bit from the first one. So let's have a look at our 3D model. And one lovely feature that Vectorworks features is if I'm in plan view here and I would like to see where maybe I need to cut a roof light or where the, uh, the, the kind of soil vent pipes pop up or maybe, you know, the vent for the um, fire. If I hold the B key down, I get X-ray fill or X-ray mode. So this enables me to basically look through all the various layers of the model. And you can see it's really nice. I can essentially click on anything, even though it's on a different layer. So that's on the first floor. And I think you'll notice that if I click on that one, it's slightly fainter. And that indicates it is actually on the ground floor. So that's really cool. You know, we've got slightly different depths. Now that works really, really instantaneously in 2D and it's very stunning in 3D. Um, and if you click into 3D, you get this lovely wireframe view. So it means that you can essentially look into the model. You can see things quite deep inside the model. For example, uh, maybe the stair. And then we can combine this with one of my other favorite features, which is basically called the clip cube. So with the clip cube, we click on the clip cube and what you find is VectorWitz will kindly isolate the geometry just around that bit of the model. And this is really fantastic as not only a modeling tool, because it allows me to go into my stair and make some changes. Um, let's have a look, maybe we'll bring up the settings. Maybe I decide rather than open riser, um, maybe we can actually introduce a riser. There we go, if we click OK, you'll see that I've, I've managed to change that stair and I've given it a vertical riser rather than having an open riser in that particular position, which probably works a bit better. Now, the other great thing about the clip cube is we can use it to generate sections. So this is a fantastic capability that Vectorworks has. So let's extend this section a little more up through the roof. And this is the section that I would like to create for the client, cutting through the stair and cutting through this roof light. So I simply right click create section viewport then I can basically go up to my sheet layers and I can generate a new sheet let's go and create a new one here St section through stair I'll click OK and I'll basically just increase the DPI because I may decide to do a rendered view in here in a moment and let's blow this up to 1 to 25 so click OK and just wait for a few moments while Vectorworks does the processing. And before we know it, we've got a really nice view of the stair on the drawing. Now, when it first presents, it comes out fairly garish and we can easily sort that by going to our classes. So if we scroll down into our classes, there's a class that I want to get to called section style. And basically, if I right click and edit that class, 
you'll see the default graphics that Vectorworks chose for the section. I'm not a huge fan of the red. Um, I'd rather tone it down to gray. And let's just turn down the line weights maybe to a 0.35 or 0.5 pen. So we'll click OK. And immediately that looks a little bit more palatable for me. So one really nice aspect of this as well is we can actually turn on different levels of detail very easily using sections. So let's hold down the Alt key and drag off a copy of that section. And let's go to Advanced Properties. So here in Advanced Properties, at the moment I am on a setting where everything is merging to give me this grey fill. And that's great for doing your planning drawings and when you haven't resolved the details, which I haven't to be fair at this stage. But if I did, I could go to separate cross sections, use attributes of the original objects, i.e. the fills and the hatches that those objects have. Let's also show the wall and slab components. And while I'm at it, I will merge any other structural objects with the same fill. And I'll click OK, and I will just simply click Update. Um, so what happens is Vectorworks will re-render the viewport and we can begin to see a little bit of the construction information that I've actually added into the model so far. As I say, it's an early stage and it's not finished yet. But you're getting the idea. So we've gone from a sort of planning stage design section to more of a working drawing section fairly rapidly. I'm also going to do one other little touch, um, which is basically pop it into perspective mode. And I'm just going to put a number of around 5 in there. I find an, a custom distance of 5 to 10 to be a very comfortable range for the depth of the section. So sometimes you need to play around with that. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's make it 3. Click Update. That will give me a little bit more depth and hopefully give me quite a good impression of that space. OK, so let's carry on with this a tiny bit more. I'm going to go back to my model and I'm just going to show you one other really cool way we can cut sections. So basically, in fact, here's one that I've already cut. So let's recut this section here. So if you don't want to do it with the clip cube, which is useful in most scenarios, but obviously on this building where the building is at a bit of an angle, it's not ideal. It's not quite what I'm looking for. Um, you will note, by the way, that you can cut vertical sections and also brilliant for doing reflected ceiling plans as well. Um, all you do actually with that is you hold down the Alt key, get the back face, and then we can sort of section up through the model and maybe spin underneath. Oh, let's go ahead and do this because they're quite interesting drawings that are hard to do. Create a section viewport and tell you what, let's just go a tiny bit more because I've got the, uh, the roof of the car there looking a bit strange. Let's go a little bit more there. Beautiful. And I'm going to go to create section viewport. And again, let's just pop that onto a sheet. Let's call this 26. And it's going to be a reflected ceiling drawing. And possibly put the DPI in there. So let's just wait for that to process for a moment. Again, it's pretty fast. Um, you'll see the Vectorwitz is cleaning up the drawing quite nicely for us. And these are, you know, these are drawings that are really hard to do, reflected ceiling drawings. But you know what is quite nice is um, if I do want to reverse it and look down again, I just click reverse direction, click update, and actually suddenly I'm now looking down. So basically you can create two sections, the, the plan looking down and easily flick it around. It's obviously gone, gone off screen, there we go. And let's paste it onto the drawing. Brilliant, okay, I'm very happy with that. So let's save what we've done so far. Okay, so let's go back to our model. And this time, I'm going to show you how to cut the section in a slightly different way. So this time, I'm going to go for a traditional method, which is called Create Section Viewport. And ex essentially, I'm going to click and retrace over that particular one, just so you can see how quickly it generates. And let's just pop that onto another sheet, 27, section D, D, perhaps, if it's one that I haven't used already. Click OK and you know imagine how long these drawings normally take. So when you're working with traditional workflow and you're drafting everything, you know this involves bringing the plan in, uh, dropping some lines down from the plan, and it takes ages. You know you can easily get, spend a good three or four hours, half a day maybe, making a drawing like this. What I really love about Vectorworks is the fluidity and the speed. So again, I'm just going to pop on a little bit of perspective. I've also chosen to render it. And I'm just going to do one other thing, which is also turn on something called Heliodon. 
And let me just check one other thing before we go ahead. I think I want to have the front lighting on. So let's click and see what happens to that viewport. We're going to have some perspective because I've, I've asked it to. We're going to have it rendered and we might even get some shadows coming in from our Heliodon um, into the model to give a little bit more clarity to the three-dimensional quality of the design. So you can see it's taking a second or two longer to render this time, but you know, should be well worthwhile. Oh, that's a really nice drawing. Really pleased with that. So basically, here we go. We've got a nice rendered um, section, which tells us a little bit about the construction information as well of the model. So I hope you've enjoyed that section <laughs> on sections. It essentially basically means that we can pull off any drawing we like from the model very rapidly. Thanks for listening. I'll be back later with some more tips on the next video.